This season, Instacart has your back-to-school. As in, they've got your back-to-school lunch favorites, like snack packs and fresh fruit. And they've got your back-to-school supplies, like backpacks, binders, and pencils. And they've got your back when your kid casually tells you they have a huge school project due tomorrow. Let's face it, we were all that kid. So first call your parents to say I'm sorry, and then download the Instacart app to get delivery in as fast as 30 minutes all school year long. Get a $0 delivery fee for your first three orders while supplies last. Minimum $10 per order. Additional terms apply. Hello, and welcome to the All Monitor Brief. It's April 10th, and I'm Kristen Tolman. Today's main story is an interview with All Monitor's chief business correspondent, Jack Dutton, on recent reports that Saudi Arabia will continue to scale back its Vision 2030 commitments. But first, let's get you caught up on the headlines. Palestinians gathered Wednesday for morning prayers on the first day of the Eid al-Fitr holiday amid the ruins of Gaza. Israeli strikes hit Gaza as Muslims marked the end of the holy fasting month of Ramadan. U.S. President Joe Biden labeled Israel's approach to the war a mistake. Here's a brief clip of Biden during the interview. So I think what he's doing is a mistake. I don't agree with his approach. I think it's outrageous that those four or three vehicles were hit by drones and taken out on a highway where it wasn't like if it was along the shore, it wasn't like there was a convoy moving here, et cetera. So I, what I'm calling for is for the Israelis to just call for a ceasefire, allow for the next six, eight weeks a total access to all food and medicine going into the country. The Pentagon has no evidence that Israel is committing genocide in Gaza, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin told Senate lawmakers Tuesday. Washington has also given Ukraine small arms and ammunition that were seized while being sent from Iranian forces to Tehran-backed rebels in Yemen, the U.S. military said Tuesday. And the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps naval commander claimed on Tuesday that Israel is expanding its presence in the United Arab Emirates. He called the expansion a threat and proposed the formation of an integrated coalition army formed by Islamic countries to fight Israel. Lebanon's interior minister vowed Tuesday to get tough on Syrians after several were arrested on suspicion of involvement in the killing of a political officer. And now, on to the main story. Hey Jack, welcome to the Al Monitor Brief. Pleasure to be here, Kristen. Thanks for having me on the podcast. So first, for our listeners that are just tuning in, what is Saudi's 2030 vision in a nutshell? So Vision 2030 uh, was first announced back in 2016 by the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. And the plan is to diversify the Saudi economy away from a reliance on oil by investing heavily in other sectors such as clean energy, critical minerals, tech, sports, esports, entertainment, tourism, and create favorable business conditions for foreign investors and um, and uh, creating a regulatory framework which makes it attractive to do business in Saudi and to move offices and headquarters to Saudi and the giga projects and mega cities such as Naom, the Red Sea Resort and the line are an integral part of this agenda. Okay. And last week reports emerged that the kingdom was planning to scale back on Naom. It's $1.5 trillion urban mega project. I mean, the plan was ambitious to begin with. It was supposed to be home to millions. It was going to operate on a fully electric grid. It was even going to be alcohol. Can you talk us through this scaling back and what economics are at play? Sure. Yeah. So Bloomberg, uh, I believe, reported on the 5th of um, April, citing uh, sources uh, familiar with the matter, government saying that Saudi government is going to make this scale back, which is a significant scale back um, of this sub project called The Line, which is an ambitious plan to build a 500 meter tall mirrored uh, 100 70 kilometer long line of parallel skyscrapers in the middle of the desert um, as part of the Neon project, which is a a huge smart city. And um, the government, uh, the report said the government has since scaled back this distance to just 2.4 kilometers long, which is a significant drop. And also they had originally planned to be one and a half million residents living in the line, and that's been scaled back to around 300,000. And um, I guess, in terms of the economics at play here, historically, Saudi Arabia has made a lot of its revenues through the sale of oil and still does today. It counts for around 40% of the country's gross domestic product. 
Oil prices were at triple digits, uh, over $100 a barrel after Russia invaded Ukraine in February 2022, which caused concerns about uh, tightness of supply. And there was also supply chain issues driven by the COVID-19 pandemic, which was just kind of... Um, which obviously began significantly in 2020 and was still going on at the start of 2022. Uh, but however, from July 2022, oil prices uh, fell below, um, way below $100 a barrel, as the demand um, wasn't quite as high as we expected. Um, so it was as low, I think, as around $65 a barrel in July 2022. And um, one of the main reasons for this uh, is China, which is the world's biggest customer of Saudi crude, was uh, slower to come out of uh, the harsh lockdowns imposed by the government during the coronavirus pandemic. So the demand for oil was not as high. And as a result, the, the, the global price of oil fell and Saudi Arabia had to make uh, some cuts with the OPEC alliance and voluntary cuts of a million barrels per day to try and prop up the price and uh, maintain the stability of the oil markets. But as a result, as we know that Saudi economy is very reliant on oil, uh, it meant that the Saudi economy wasn't growing at as fast a rate as expected. So at the start of 2022, it was um, Saudi Arabia seen as the fastest growing economy in the G20. Um, but because of these oil cuts, the state oil firm Aramco saw its profits decline and the economy even contracted. Um, so therefore, um, the Saudi government has had to be a bit tighter on the purse strings and it's uh, the Saudi sovereign wealth fund, the public investment fund, has had to take control of different companies and had to scale back ambitions as a result. So quite the geopolitics that are playing out and impacting some of the Vision 2030. This specific project was a cornerstone one for the overall plans. Are you hearing reports that other projects will need to adjust dates? And and what do you think experts think when they see such delays? Sure. I mean, firstly, um, this is not really a rare phenomenon in the sense we've seen in the past Gulf authorities scaling back their ambitions. Um, like in the early 2000s in Saudi Arabia, there was the King Abdullah economic city in the Mecca province, which originally intended to house 2 million residents, but now is home to just under 10,000 inhabitants. Um, we've also seen this with Mustar City in Abu Dhabi, uh, with kind of initial targets being more optimistic than the actual population. So I guess it's um, like analysts and experts I spoke to kind of see this as a good sign of a dose of realism, because at the end of the day, Vision 2030, which is when uh, all of these targets are in place is only uh, less than six years away now. So um, it's probably a good good sign of dose of realism. <laughs> they, the experts I spoke to do think there's going to be more scale backs because Saudi Arabia has a lot of competing priorities at the moment. Not only is it got Vision 2030, but it's hosting the 2034 FIFA World Cup. And as we saw with Qatar in 2022, there was a lot of scrambling to get all of the stadiums and infrastructure completed on time. Saudi is also hosting the Trade Fair Expo 2030 and the 2029 Asian Winter Games in a mountain resort called Trojena, relatively near to Neom, which hasn't actually been completed, um, the construction of which hasn't been completed yet. So they've got a lot to think about. And um, I guess it's a good sign of, this dose of realism and we'll we'll expect obviously they're going to continue to build and um the elements of nail with the standalone commercial viability and manageable upfront costs and support a wider economic strategy will proceed in the medium term however um there's likely to be some other announcements of a scale back or basically saying this scale back is part of phase one or phase two and having a more long-term view according to the analysts i spoke to about this it's almost hard to believe all the things that the kingdom has uh, signed their signed their name on the dotted line for. So the last question that I really have is, does this have anything to do with the regional political dynamics at play? Yes, of course. I mean, the October the 7th attack on Israel and the subsequent war in Gaza uh, has impacted uh, the, the regional dynamics and the regional economics and in, as well as international trade. However, in terms of energy and energy markets, oil markets, uh, the Gaza war has not had much of an impact on price or supply uh, due to the weaker than expected demand for oil and gas, especially from China. 
So I would say that's had more of an impact on the Saudi economy than directly the Gaza war. However, the subsequent attacks by the Houthi uh, rebels in Yemen on the Red Sea has caused the rerouting of hundreds of vessels around South Africa's Cape of Good Hope, which is a much longer route, which adds another 10 days to the journey. And that has uh, impacted consumer goods, uh, container ships, caused a lot of delays, increased shipping costs and insurance premiums, which uh, could lead to supply chain issues in Saudi Arabia to complete these giga projects, meaning that there may be delays or bottlenecks. Also, as a result of the war, there hasn't been as much foreign direct investment in the region as um, the Saudi authorities may have expected. And obviously, foreign direct investment is integral to helping get these giga projects off the ground. All right. Thank you so much, Jack. Uh, and we'll be sure to follow up if there's any more developments. Great. Thanks very much. That's it for today, April 10th. You can read about all these stories and more impacting the region at allmonitor.com.